<laughs> they can load the dishwasher or unload it um, of things that are not breakable. They can dress themselves if they're, if they're highly functional and restock toilet paper in the bathrooms. They can pour a glass of water. Um, at home is the only place they can do this, guys. So I really recommend having a little jug like this. This is from Small Hands. And just filling it up this much, and you're watching them, and they're gleefully going to the very top. And right next to it, you have a, a kitchen towel. OK, you spilled a little. Let's wipe this up. And they're learning how to be able to pour. So one day, they're in charge of the drinks at the table. A couple more things here. They can scoop cereal into a bowl. They can drink from a glass that's very um, and, there, and I always say bottom on the, on the seat before we drink. They can turn off light switches as you're leaving. Oh, let's turn off the light switches. And you are beginning to teach them this habit because that's what chores are, right? They can pack and carry their own backpacks. I see moms with so much and then a toddler just chilling out. <laughs> Toddlers can have a little backpack and have some of their stuff in there, right? They can put a leash on a dog and maybe get dragged a few yards by it if it's a big one. So there's lots that they can do and you, I'll let you read the um, three and four year old ones on your own. But the idea is never do for a child what they can do for themselves. And this might be a little scary for some people, but it will empower them and it will empower you later on. Never do for a child what they can do for themselves. So tip number three, you guys filling this out on your little outline, is to simplify your home and your schedule. It's so hard to maintain a tidy home when you have all this stuff. And it's hard to maintain a tidy room for a little person when they have all this stuff. I really encourage you to wheedle down toys until you have three or four objects or sets in their room. And the rest, if you can't bear to part with it, goes into a toy rotation library. So that's a, a dark rubber maid that you can't see through. Some people call that opaque. And um, that goes either in the garage or someplace up where they don't get to self-serve. And you are just kind of an observer of their play and you're noticing, wow, she's just never playing with that one doll. I think it's time to put that doll out of service and move the next one in. Or maybe it's time for that doll to go to Goodwill to bless somebody else. So less stuff is super helpful. Simplify your home. And also, of course, most of you probably do this, but one toy at a time. So you see your child dumping the Legos, playing with them, and then they get that look in their eye and they're heading over to the next toy. And then you come in and say, oh, we do one toy at a time. Looks like you want to play cars. Let's clean up the Legos. And guess who's doing most of the work? Yeah, you are, because this is a little zombie. Okay, so you're, you're just putting stuff in and you're saying, yeah, we clean it. Oh, not yet. We have to finish cleaning. And they're helping you. And then you're going to the next one. And when you come in and are the buzzkill a few many times to do that, they'll start to get it. And they'll go, okay, I got I to gotta clean this up first. And that'll be good for you. Simplify your schedule. What do I mean by that? It takes time to teach somebody chores. It's not something you can do when you're in a hurry. So it takes dedicated time at home. Right? Chores don't really usually happen out when we're on a play date or when we're taking them to the park and doing all the things that add some energy and liveliness to our life. So we've got to have those dedicated times at home where it's just about getting the chores done. The fourth tip, keep it light, ladies. Okay? Celebrate effort. I've gone to some dark places having chore battles with my kids where it's like, I've asked you over and over again, can't you just brush the dog? What does it take to get you to brush the dog? And, and that's, that's sort of you've shut down the child. Their love language is play, and that's not going to go away suddenly when they're doing work. So that's the way we talk to them. In fact, there's a great book here um, that I have actually on my website, simplicityparentingwithmary.com. I have a blog post all about what I'm talking about today, and I have this book on there. It's How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen by Joanna Faber. And it's just magical, and there's also lots of like cartoon drawings, which I really like. When I don't feel like reading, I can just go right to the cartoon drawing. So this has some great ideas about how to communicate with a child and keep it light. I'm going to give you three of those. The first is be playful. Um, and some of you are like, that's not how I roll, right? But I can give you some specifics. Kids love when inanimate objects become alive. So let's say you're trying to get the shoes to stay by the front door and the, um, what do you call that, the chest. And they just always forget and they walk on. You can say like, hey, hi, my name's Shu. I live here. Can you help my partner come in? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, they love that stuff. And they're like, yeah. OK, so keep it light. Those toys can be living things that can talk to them and can, can add some breath, some levity. Uh, there's also keeping it light by making it a competition. like. 
how quickly can we get these blocks in there? I bet you can go super fast. Oh, mommy's beating you. That works with some kids who are competitive and, and like a little bit of, of, of you know, movement that may not work with others. Um, another way to keep it light is to offer a choice. Do you want to clean up the cars or do you want to be in charge of the blocks? I want to do the cars. Okay, great. You're putting the blocks, they're doing nothing by the way. That's okay, give them a choice. <laughs> now you're coming over, okay, we gotta get these cars done. Don't get into a power struggle. Realize that between one to three, you're doing most of the work, but you are requiring that they be there with you, witnessing it. Another great way to keep it light is to describe the progress with appreciation. So that's something like, oh my goodness, you picked up all five of your cars. And look, now I can just walk along without hurting my feet. Thank you. Now I see over here, we still have the tracks. Let's get those up too. Oh, this room is looking so good. You're having a celebration for them. And guess what? It works with your husbands too. Okay? <laughs> Celebrate the heck out of these small little wins. And they will want to do more. Get excited about it. Um, so you're saying things like this is my little cutie Esme my niece and she is putting things away in the pantry for me and you'll see at her feet and her bottom that a lot of them are not making it in but what am I saying oh, thank you we're putting all of our food away Esme you are helping me in the kitchen thank you and then when she toddles off you're putting the rest of it away you're, you're celebrating the effort not not the end product because that will come and I think it's important to embrace clean enough for health messy enough for happy. That's the stage of life that we're in right now. Okay, clean enough for health, messy enough for happy. No one's gonna get a disease in your home, but it's not gonna be like on some blog or Martha Stewart. Um, and one thing that, I, that God says that I just totally love, um, and I think it's on your outline, do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. You're going to be looking for little small moments of your child helping you, things you've asked for, compliance. You're basically training them in a culture of we do chores together. The actual thing they're doing may not be that great, but you are getting them used to like every day they are helping you with something. So small beginnings. The last, no, the second to last tip is any chore worth doing is worth teaching how to do it. It's kind of obvious, but sometimes we forget these guys did not come out of the womb knowing how to empty the dishwasher. It, that, that takes skill and dexterity and specifics. So it, it makes me think a lot of the poopy boot. This poopy boot was the result of my cat being angry at my daughter and leaving a prize for her on top of her boot. And she's like, Mom, look, they're ruined. I said, they're not ruined. We can clean those. And she's like, well, I'm not doing it. Can you do it? And I was like, yeah, I'll clean those. And then she left for school. And I kind of looked at the boot, and I got my keys and left the house, and the next day I looked at the boot, and then I put the boot, actually I first put the boot out in the sun, I don't know, that just felt like the right thing to do. And the problem was, I didn't know how to begin. I don't know how to clean poop off of a suede boot, yet the, the frugal, cheap person in me was like, we're going to figure it out, right? And I think a lot of times kids are facing a poopy boot when they walk into like their room and you say, yeah, go ahead and, and just get this room tidy. They're just like, oh my gosh, where do I begin? They have no idea. And so I kind of needed someone to say, okay, first step, let's scrape off the large pieces. Oh, thank you, first step. And that kind of works when you're with your child. You're like, okay, we're gonna clean your room. First step, let's find all the clothes. Let's put the clothes in the hamper. Okay, they've got something specific and concrete they can do and they go around. Oh, and what are you doing as they're doing that? Celebrating and praising, yeah. <gasps> Look at them, oh, I bet you can't throw it from over here. Look at you, you're just getting them all in. Check it out, no clothes on the floor. Now, should we get books or cards? Books, okay, let's get books. Where are we gonna put them? Uh, my bed. No, we're not gonna put them on the bed. <laughs> no, we're gonna, no, we're gonna put them over here on this little, what we call this, a stand? <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, that's where the books are gonna go. So you're celebrating and you're being specific about what you want and you're training them. And I, I, on my website, I have this awesome link to a woman who certifies her children. Has anybody seen this? In jobs. So there's a video of her giving her child his certification <laughs> test on sink cleaning. And basically she teaches him, and it's like a big deal in her home, like did you get certified yet? And she has five kids, so you gotta have a system, right, when you have five kids. And so it's a neat little thing where she says, remember the steps? And she's broken down what it is to clean a sink. Because 
we need to know the steps to be able to do something. And so check that out. That's pretty fun. The last tip is really more of a goal, and that's follow through, Mama. Because 90% of chores becoming a habit is that the parent kept checking in and following through and requiring that it get done. So you want to think about what do you as the parent need in terms of support so that you can follow through, right? For me, I, I always needed to set a timer because I would go in with my son and we would go to clean up an area and I would forget we were doing it. I'd, be, I'd find myself when the timer went off, I'd make myself iced tea and be like, what? He, he's playing in another room. So to keep me on task, I would set the timer. And the timer works great for distractible kids as well. Um, I think what's great now is, of course, our smartphones. Setting a timer, if you want to get the house clean at 4 o'clock before Dad comes home, then you should set your timer. Have some fun song. There's the song. It's time to clean up. And guess who's going to be doing most of the cleaning? Yeah, you are. But it's a dedicated time of cleaning. Oh, no, we're not coloring right now. We're cleaning. Oh, you want to pick that up for me? Great. We're getting it all together and the song's going. So things that can remind you to help you to stay on, um, stay consistent. Another way to follow through is to add some rhythm and some predictability to it. Like, for instance, before we eat in my home, the dog eats. And that's not because the dog is more important than us, it's so we can remember. Because the days will go by and the dog's just like, please, somebody, right? <laughs> so when we sit down to dinner, it's like, oh, Bear, has the dog eaten yet? And he's like, uh, no. We're like, all right, well, before you eat, the dog eats. So linking your chores to something that's going to happen naturally is pretty powerful. It helps you to remember. Um, something that uh, one mom does, and there's a link on my uh, blog, is she has a color wheel for the days of the week. And she, you color it in with your kid. Come on, we'll color this one orange. Get your orange um, pencil out. We'll do that. And each day is a color. So let's say today's, and you know, kids, they don't know the concept of days and tomorrow and yesterday. And so this really helps it to be concrete. Oh, today is Thursday. It's orange day. So you can wear your orange pants today. Mom's going to wear her orange lipstick, and we're going to have oranges as our snack. And today is the day we clean the toilet. They don't understand there's no connection, right? <laughs> We clean the toilet. Come on in. I'll shut the door so you don't wander around and kill yourself while I'm cleaning the toilet. And, and you can hand me this, you know, whatever. So you can decide what each day it is. Like perhaps green day is we garden. You know, that makes a little more intuitive sense. But something to think about if that appeals to you. Uh, another way is to write down chores. And, and then your little people can't read yet, right? So I don't know if you can see this, but. Um, this person has drawn, a, a, this is one of my um, clients, they drew a picture of the left of, of a sun and next to it says rise and shine, then there's a bowl of, of oatmeal, breakfast, then there's a tidy bed, it says make bed, then get dressed, wash your face, and brush your teeth. And the thing about chores is that meaning hides in repetition. Whatever it is that you insist that we do over and over again becomes things that mean something to your family, so there must be a reason you're doing it. Um, so that family really believes in not breaking out because they're washing their face, and that's awesome. <laughs> Another thing to help you follow through is the family meeting. This is a powerful thing to start. You can do it once a week. You can do it once a month. Or if you're like me, you can forget and then make it quarterly. Oh, it's spring, so it's time for our family meeting, right? And it, this is a short time. It's like maybe 10 minutes. It's fun, it's participatory, meaning eventually your child will be in charge of taking notes, or they'll be in charge of, what the, of the game you're gonna play, and it's very kid-centric, so it's not a time for the parents to go, what, what week do you have off, honey? When are we gonna do our family vacation? Boom, you're gonna lose these guys, right? This is a time to be like, guess what, guys? This summer, we're going to Park City, and we're gonna get an RV, so start thinking about what you wanna bring on the RV. Yay! And now let's talk a little bit about how chores have been going. How, have we been keeping our room clean? And then you do a celebration. Yes, Junior has really been doing a great job making his bed. <coughs> awesome. What chores are we working on this week? Well, this and this. Now you're done. You just brought it up. You've made it obvious that this is important to your family. You have a culture of everybody helping out. And this will get more important when your kids are in middle school and they're trying to find reasons to go into their room and shut the door and to have a private life and that's normal but you kind of want to keep regrouping. So if you've already made it a thing that we have our family meeting on Sundays or we have our family meeting on the first day of the month, um, they will know to gather up and to share things. And um, there's lots online about, about this but I will post something as well as there's a great book that kind of goes into, um, I think it's called Positive Parenting. 
So the last thing I want to tell you about is um, this thing that I tell my kids, and they're sick of hearing it, but the little house on the prairie is what I think about when I think about chores, right? And, and then it was kind of easy, because like, Ma, Pa, I'm done taking the goats out. Do you want me to make the biscuits now? Like there was like just a weird culture of like kids work. You had kids so they could work. You needed them to run the farm, right? Now it's a little bit different. So what I say to my kids is we don't have acres of farmland. And um, we don't have to care for that. We don't have large animals that we need to herd and feed. And we don't have to harvest and sow and plant food till the point where our hands are bloody. Um, but that's kind of good because farm life in books is beautiful. But in real life, it's backbreaking and it's really hard work. And so I'm grateful to the people who do that full time. But in our home, we still have work to do to care for our family. The floor in our house and the grounds in our yard might not produce food, but they produce security, they produce comfort, they produce a safe place for us to regroup before we go out into the world and learn at school and, and work at work. So because of that, we vacuum the rug, we mop the floor, we sweep, we rake the leaves, we care for this area. We buy our food, we bring it home and we wash it and we put it into separate containers so that it'll be ready when we're ready to eat. So instead of large animals that we're caring for, we care for our pets, we care for our sofas, we care for our tables and our beds and our toys. And we want to think of our house as a farm, right? It's our farm and if everyone does a little bit every day, we'll always have a comfortable, healthy home. So thank you for listening. I'm going to stick around and stay back there near the food. So if anybody has any questions, <laughs> and you just want to talk through something, come on back, I'll be back there. And I do have some questions for you to um, talk about as a table. So thank you very much.